Hello YouTube! Tis I the Rumpled One. Thursday, June the 14th, 2012. It's a uh, cool dreary day so far. Clouds in the sky, overcast. Yesterday though, was really, uh, had a fun day yesterday. I went up to Mount Pilot and my friend Robert, you may have uh, seen the videos on my friend Robert, he was playing um, at a hospice. He plays pianos. He also does drums and a few other things too. But he's a pretty interesting uh, piano player. Kind of does his own thing, mixes things up. But I thought he told me he was playing at the Senior Center. So I was all over Mount Pilot trying to find him. I finally tracked him down. And then after that, we went to this little restaurant kind of an interesting place too. Uh, they serve meals for $1.50. Of course, you can't make any money serving meals for $1.50, but that's not really the point of the place. It was uh, meatloaf, mashed potatoes and corn, or split pea soup. And those of you who know me know I don't eat split pea soup. Anyway, we had lunch and then he asked me if I wanted to go down to the farmer's market. I said, sure, let's go check it out. So we went down there, and of course there's a bunch of vendors with their tables, so we were walking around. Well, there was this one vendor, these two ladies there, and they had freeze-dried food. They had some peas, they had some corn, some pinto beans dehydrated too. Actually they weren't freeze dried, they were dehydrated if I remember correctly. And they also had some kind of uh, fake chorizo which I thought was pretty funny. It was tofu um, chur with chorizo flavoring. Well, got to talking to them and come to find out this one lady said she came from Bosnia. So I asked her if she was there during the war. And she looked at me and she said yes, 90 to 92. And that she had a chance to get out. But she stayed because I guess she had some family there. So of course being a prepper survivalist I wanted to hear more of her story. But you could tell that, you know, I guess she had some painful memories because you could see maybe a couple times she was holding back the tears. So I didn't want to push. I really wish I had my camera there because you guys would have enjoyed it. But you have to kind of respect people. I mean, this isn't somebody that, you know, is telling a story that they made up. This is somebody that lived it. And you could tell that you don't want to go through something like a Bosnia where the stuff really hits the fan. I mean, she talked about, you know, buildings that, you know, mortars. And she said how they survived on beans and corn. Every day, beans and corn. For years. Not just you know, over the weekend or 72 hours or a week, years. And, and that's just really tough. And she looked at us, me and Robert, and she said, I don't know how we did it, but I know why we did it, because we had to. And I guess that just goes to show you how strong the human spirit is is that once you make up your mind, you get a strong enough why something should happen, you'll figure out the how, and then you'll do it. I believe um, Anthony Robbins says that you have to find out your why. Maybe I got my uh, those uh, success coaches mixed up, but I think it was him. He says you gotta have a big enough why. If you got a big enough why, That'll get you out of bed in the morning. That'll get you moving. That'll keep you moving.
But if you think about it really deeply, if you had a chance to leave a war-torn area, would you? Or would you stay? I mean, that's hard. I said I didn't want to press her because you just don't know what bad memories she's had. I don't know if she lost any family or friends during the war. Most likely she did. But I was just, you know, thankful to hear what she had to share. Another thing she said, she looked at us and she goes, I don't know why people in this country complain. You have so much. You know, you take it for granted. She goes, I wake up and, and look at all this, you know, smile, happy. And it's just one of those things where, as I say, life is choices. You could choose to focus on the miserable and be miserable, focus on what's wrong, or you could look for those uh, bright spots and focus on them. It's one of those uh, life dilemmas, contradictions. It's, you can be happy with what you have, but does that mean you're a slacker because you're not striving for more? It's a personal decision, personal conclusion. Don't let anybody tell you. You decide for yourself. That's what's important. Cherry juice in a breakfast bar. I don't know. I think this had, uh, see, with, this had 90 calories. I don't know. Maybe they're going to cut down on the size of these breakfast bars, you know, because we don't want people taking responsibilities for themselves because then who knows what happens. So the government's going to tell us. That's another thing the uh, lady from Bosnia was saying that over there she goes the government doesn't care about you they don't do anything for you well of course I replied you know the government here doesn't care about us either all they want is our money so I guess that just goes to show all over the world it's the same one group of people taken from another group of people, telling them how to be, how to do, what they can and can't do. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the chainsaws are going in the background. I think I heard them about 5.15 this morning. I got my chores to do today, that's for sure. But, you said that lady from Bosnia made me think. And I hope my sharing her story with you makes you think. Another thing I asked her about, I said... Where did you get the beans? They grew them. They saved the seeds. And I guess they knew where to go. They go places where nobody else wanted to go. And that's how they survived. So... I guess we all have to just think what we what we would do in those types of situations, and it's better to think about it now, before it happens. So when it happens, and emotions are running high, you've got your plan prepared. Because if you fail to prepare today, you're preparing to fail tomorrow. <laughs>